Hello, family, and good evening. It is Sunday, 9.39 in Atlanta, Georgia, and we just got finished looking at and taking notes on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, titled Moving On Up and Moving On, episode 21, season 12. Let's get right on into it, because I tell you, I don't even know if I liked any part of it tonight. Except for maybe the cameraman being real, real, real shady. When Kenya was in there in her closet with uh, Cynthia Bailey. And they were talking over the comings and goings on what she going to do with Mark and this, that, and the third. And the cameraman was just filming all them clothes. Some of them clothes had tags still on them. The shoes uh, they were showing, they looked like they were brand new. I mean, it just looked like a staged scene. Like, she could take all them clothes back, get her refund. Hell, she probably rented the clothes, you know what I'm saying? Just to make sh- uh, make it look like he had clothes there. Because even Cynthia was like, where did these clothes come from? Ma don't, you know, she would give you the impression that Ma don't come here down there often to have all these clothes. And she was trying to bust up on uh, well, really bust Kenya's storyline all the way up, meaning, no, she lying. <laughs> Mark ain't him. Mark is not him. But I'm telling you, honey, I was like, and then when Cynthia was trying to go and cut one of them sleeves up, like she was having a Medea moment, child, Kenya got them uh, scissors for her so fast. Like, girl, don't do that. I got to send this money back. Child, I thought I would hit the floor. I was like, yeah, because you know, it ain't nothing but some fake foolery, fuckery, fraudulent shitty activity you got going on when it comes to that Mark storyline and them rented clothes you done got from somebody's boutique or whatnot. I'm like, girl, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you? Then we got Todd over there still whining. I mean, every time we look at Todd, Lord have mercy, he be whining, whining, whining. And Nene's son um, started his, uh, the baby boy, I think his name is Brent. He started his YouTube channel. He did a a phenomenal job with um, just starting out. He did so much better. And Todd started his YouTube channel too. And I'm like, (sighs) and Todd's supposed to be in film and production and he can't even get a YouTube video together. And I know he's using candy people, but I'm like. Brent was just like out there vlogging, just doing everyday thing. And it seemed like you could just get caught up into what he was doing and understanding why he was doing it. He kept his girlfriend off the air or his lady friend he dealing with. She was over to the crib and everything. I mean, it was just sweet and honest, and you can just definitely get into the mode. So, I was like, now, why Todd can't come off that way? Just relax, just down to earth, you know, and just us feeling his vibe. But, again, on this particular episode, he trying to blame Candy for everything. Oh, excuse me. And the therapist pretty much pointed out. They both have very strong aspirations. They have goals that's driving them towards the security of the family with monetary uh, being the the full focus of why they're doing what they're doing. And they are both are not looking at each other. They just running for that money. And uh, even though Todd's saying he ain't running for it from it, but I guess he can't because Candace pretty pretty much giving him every financial opportunity to excel you know it's just whether he want to do it or not so i I just think again he's just jealous of the position candy is in and he wish that he could turn the clocks back around and he can be afforded some of the um lucrative money that she has but it'd be more so on his line that he's pretty much the breadwinner because he know he ain't the breadwinner he knows he's not the breadwinner and his ego is just eating him up and he'll be the the uh crazy kind of guy listening to his friends that would divorce candy because he feel less than and be want her bad when she'd be done went with somebody else or just don't want him bad period you know what i'm saying but it is what it is so 
look up on uh, Nene's sons, Brent King. He's very entertaining. You might get some laughs off him or whatnot. And because he damn show, uh, show Nene them how. <laughs> All the unkeptness, all the, the gardening and, and the stuff he said he need to do around the house. And I'm like, uh, Brent, I think you're kind of getting out your lane. You know, you need a real landscaper out there. You need people that know how to pressure wash furniture, pool furniture and things of that nature. Unless you don't went to school to know how much water to put on that stuff and this, that and the third. And what chemicals to use to get all that pollen and all of the other residue that's on there i i think you're gonna tear up your mama furniture because you already pretty much don't showed us how you can tear up her garage but that's just another whole story y'all gotta go over there uh i don't have my phone to give y'all the correct youtube but just look up nene son or brent um but in a leaks is um youtube channel you'll come you you know how he looks so you'll get his avatar and i mean he's really funny i tell you not comical funny but you know he just make you laugh a little bit here and there but anyway let's get on into the ep episode we got candy she goes over to visit kenya uh uh, you know and talk about her and todd and what had happened the night before and this that a third um pretty much uh, Todd was getting on her behind about time management and how she spends no time with the family and especially him uh Candy starts crying of course telling Kenya about the whole situation did y'all know Kenya did not move off her sofa to go give uh Candy an embrace a warm embrace or uh, uh, lean on my shoulder type embrace and cry your eyes out because I got you Kenya didn't know none of that shit she was saying don't hurt my toy huh she was going for the man so i was like okay candy see she can't even be a real friend of you to give you some type of empathy well really sympathy because she knows all about a man trying to uh tell you or put you in your place about what you should be doing or what you shouldn't be doing type of scenario you know what i'm saying so uh she didn't really she was on todd's side so i found that very interesting uh so then we moved to candy oh you know she said she's um she 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 made a very valid point, which I don't understand why she does so much, but I don't know, because I think her family is kind of not her immediate family that she has under her roof, but other family members, maybe be her cousins or uh, I, I'm, I'm not friends of family. I, you know, I really don't know, but she pretty much confessed that she was taking care of other people's families, you know, and a lot is on her shoulders, a lot. Um, she has a lot of burden on her. Uh, that she really haven't let us know about. That would be a very good storyline. Maybe she'll put it out. Excuse me. Of her. What do you call it? The spinoff that she got going on. Or will be coming out soon. Maybe she'll tell us a little bit more of that. I'm not really sure. But she did make a um, statement. That she definitely was taking care of other people's families. I know she's taking care of her cousin one of them anyway um financially I, I don't i think he got into some trouble with the law but candy you need to seek resources to kind of uh put these people to work that can work uh of some organizations that you know will hire people that have criminal backgrounds or felonies or whatnot you too young to be uh, strapped down even though they say those that have much much is expected i understand that but you know you can't just be taking around taking care of, you know a slew of family members that can probably take care of their own needs and wants you can probably just be there for the real hard times or something to that nature because who honey that was just a lot and you can see that it was taking a toll on you so oh peace and blessings to you but you know like i said you got into a very ratchet type of um career choice so you pretty much gotta um deal with it in its essence uh because you pretty much asked for it then we move on here we got ken telling her confessionals uh or 
it was somewhere in her confessionals. Then it was some. She was telling Candy to, you know, y'all got to get y'all poor artists right. And and she was telling Candy pretty much, you need to stop chasing all that money and chase Todd. And I said, are you saying that for the well-being of Candy's mental state, Kenya? Because like I said, you didn't give her no love by giving him her a hug and letting her cry on your shoulder about what she's going through. You didn't share any of that. But she was really clear uh, on some past scenes uh, where you were crying and carrying on and she was embracing you and hugging you and trying to hold you down in that way but you didn't re reciprocate uh, the same thing that she was going through so that was kind of effed up on your part Miss Kenya twirls are y'all looking at this are y'all seeing where I'm coming from when I'm talking about Kenya Moore and her just bad demeanor okay but anyway uh, I don't know I was like damn where well, Kenya coming from that point is perspective are you jealous because candy got all that money and that opportunity that's flowing her way uh in the land of milk and honey can you if that's why you want her to slow down and watch her marriage because her marriage is going to be there either way or it's not going to be there but it should not affect how she gets down and get her money but you know like i said she's in a satanic realm ratchet world of um in, in mindless entertainment and drama and she does a lot of strange things for some change but that's something she signed up for and that's pretty much it but it seems like kenya your horns are showing again you're trying to add up somebody's pocketbook uh what they got in their bank account pretty much but anyway moving on from there we got kenya got uh mark blocked on the phone because you know candy was asking well you know is he calling is he checking on you this then third and she goes on to pretty much tell candy yeah he might be checking but i, he, I, I can't get the uh the message because i got him blocked i'm like now, damn can why would you have him blocked do you got two phones do you got two phones because he still needs to get in touch with his daughter Okay, now if you got the main phone blocked, the phone number blocked, he can't get in touch with his daughter. Okay, he can't Skype his daughter. So, that's the elementary childish crap you're doing, can you? Just because you're mad at him, if he want to speak to his daughter and not you, that's just how it is. You knew what it was when you were going into the situation. All right, um... Candy throws back. She stopped crying, of course. And that's the one thing about Candy. I'm tired of seeing her cry. Oh, I'm just so tired of seeing her cry every time. But she's a very emotional person. And that's cool to be emotional. But when things need to be said and done. Because when you show get mad. You make your statements known. But then again, you end up crying. I'm like, oh, girl. Ooh, I don't know what to say. But I know I'm tired of that storyline. And you crying all the time. I'm like, just, just walk away. Go back and, and get yourself together then come back and, and get back on the tube or let them start filming you again. Because they're crying and stuff. It's, it's always tied and through. Tied and through, girl. But anyway. Um, then she goes on. Meaning Kenya tells Candy to get, you know, it's going to work out. Get it back together. Start focusing on your man and not that money. And uh, she tells him, what is his favorite food? Like, she giving her a 21-question quiz. She says, salad. I said, okay, fine. Um, well, go and buy him a nice salad and stuff of that nature. And then give him a second salad. So, give him two salads. And what she was meaning by the latter salad was let Todd toss her salad. You know what I'm saying? In a sexual way. And I'm like, girl, if you only knew, if you only knew. Okay, that made Candy laugh and stuff of that nature. And then pretty much Kenya threw her out of the house. Uh, but I'm like, Kenya, sex can't uh, solve everything. Because sex can be good and y'all can be having it. And the other shit is just fucked up. Like the bills are behind. Y'all can get evicted. They finna take the car. All that kind of stuff. So, no, sex don't handle everything. And you ain't ready to have sex when all the other stuff is falling apart. That's the least of your worries. Okay, but for some people, you know. Then we got Mal. They over at the wine bailey cellar. And Cynthia's talking with Mal about the business, and she was giving her compliments on one thing, but then she was getting on Mal about another thing. And I'm like, where is Mal, husband? Is she still married, y'all? Is she still married to that guy who was playing overseas ball? Because it don't seem like she married. She never would show her ring finger hand, because I was sure looking for it. 
And she was telling Cynthia, she was trying to say the other staff want two days off. They don't want just one day off. I'm like, damn, y'all working seven days a week? I thought this was a business where it was just five days a week. Okay. All right. Um, but I guess y'all going seven. And um, man, I was like, I need two days off. I'm like, man, you don't want to work. So it, Cynthia evidently is taking care of you and your salary too. And probably paying you very well. More than probably what you need to be being paid but you know that's just how family do but girl it don't like mal trying to do that time they off uh what what's she said the wine belts uh, this thing is closed on wednesdays i'm like why is it closed on wednesdays mal i mean i could see it maybe be, be closing on sunday but yeah y'all need to be there that's a business people love to come and shop on saturday uh friday you know what i'm saying but she said they closed on wednesday so i'm like okay y'all ain't no hairdresser place you know where you work on the weekend friday and saturday y'all those hairdresser places are usually closed the hair salons they're usually closed on um sunday and monday but i don't know about mail i tell you i guess the bracelet jewelry thing she was hand making didn't go through because cynthia knows she wear a whole hell of a, lot, a whole hell of a lot of them you know what i'm saying they always be wrapped around her wrist and i know she's getting it by way of her sister but i was like girl mm, 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 mm. but she was telling on uh, cynthia what are you gonna do are you gonna move to la or are you gonna stay in atlanta because you know well mike he's the right one to get your ass in trouble i mean get your ass in tow and i'm like why do you want a man to control your sister uh ma'am are you having a little animosity that we don't know about girl Whew. then we move on to portia miss portia is taking pictures of her and miss pj miss pj is just like her dad and honey she ain't for all them pictures <laughs> and when she get old enough she keep hanging around her dad and she gonna be like she ain't gonna be she ain't gonna be she's not gonna be one to be fooling with her mom and her mess okay pj was like no nah, she would not look not one time at her dad when he got that camera talking about he finna take a picture she looked away she's like mm, i ain't got time for this i got the big folks the producers over here with the big ass camera and the lights looking at me all the time these strangers then my dad trying to sit there uh, i'm giving i'm giving all y'all the back of my head to shoot take a picture of that <laughs> PJ went ahead, but she got her address for um, I guess in Greece somewhere. She got her gown or a little sundress or whatnot, that kind of little formal. And she got uh, PJ one, and PJ like, girl, you always already putting these damn bows in my head. I'm always made up. I'm sick. Okay, can I be in a onesie sometime? Can I be like my dad? Can we just be in a onesie sometime? You just leave us alone. That's what she was giving me. She would give me that kind of tease. I like that's right, PJ. Go on, go on. Don't take no picture if you don't want to. Don't take it, girl. But then her meaning portion, Dennis. You know, they start talking about a wedding and all this type of stuff. And Portia's telling him he needs to be at the house more. He needs to be there with them. Dennis says, you know, I can't do it. He had to go drink him some brown liquor, honey. I don't know if it was Hennessy or it was, um, what is that, um, dad, what is that, um, brown liquor called? Dad, I can't think, bourbon. <laughs> it was brown, I know that, and I don't think we're Hennessy. But anyway, he was like, I gotta get me a drink before I answer this woman, her questions. But he went on a talk. He said, I don't, I'm on a wedding. I just want to go where you get, you know, get the man tell you, y'all, you know, married. And that's it. He like, you meant to say you just want to go down to the courthouse. That's what you want to do. And uh, she like, uh-uh, we ain't doing that. I want a wedding. He like, and we ain't got no wedding. Prenup is what we need to be discussing. So they kind of got to arguing back and forth about that. Um... Portia started bringing up the past, uh, and Dennis was like, you know, I ain't finna go through this thing where you have me come to your house, I bring all my stuff, and then you sit there and throw me out again, and then Portia was like, well, it was a reason why you were thrown out, you know, it just didn't come up that I wanted to throw you out, you cheated. <laughs> 
I said, damn, Dennis, she got you right there, baby. She got you. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Have her let you go out here and do every little thing you want to do with people and then come back and think it's going to be okay? You know, a portion ain't about that life. Okay, she might can forgive you today, tomorrow, and another day. But um, no, uh-uh. she, she don't want to look at you. So she has to dismiss you from time to time. But he like, I don't want no wedding. I don't want no wedding. I don't want no wedding. He want to go to the justice of peace. Portia not with it. Portia saying you being mean. I don't want to talk about it no more. I want to talk about it when you are in best. You know, you're in your, um, you, you're just in a funky mood now. I, I, and she, she's like, we need to just table this. And when we can definitely talk about it. When you're in better spirits, we'll talk about it then. He like, uh-uh. I'm telling you, I want a prenup. I don't want no wedding. So she goes, and evidently she must have had baked some cookies. So she went in there. She started getting all them cookies up. And Porsche was like, this conversation has ended. She go and get all them cookies and put them in a um, paper towel. And she get her something to drink. And she leaves. She go stay out. She said, you ain't get no cookies here. And you ain't get no eatable cookies. <laughs> and she left him and went upstairs and left him with the baby. I said, you go ahead, Porsche. You go ahead. Because the only person that wants that man is you. Okay. But anyway. It was still about prenup, prenup. Porsche like, no, no, no. He's like, yes, yes, yes. It just is what it is. So then we go to Nene. Nene is uh, celebrating her 23rd years of marriage. She's celebrating with Greg up there uh, in their bedroom. She got it all decked out. And she, I don't know what Nene was doing. Because it just all was like, are you serious? Y'all are too old to be doing anything. It looked like he got arthritis. He can't move that good. And you getting served up by another man that he don't know of so yeah you having sex all day every day but it ain't with greg honey uh it was a hot mess greg was you know talking he really wasn't talking nasty but he was getting you in the mood that he wanted bed he wanted sex he wanted to get felt on or something but it was cute um uh, but mm -mm. you know nene goes around talking about uh the divorce they went through the second marriage they went through uh the sickness that they went through that they definitely have been through a lot in their 23 years of marriage and oh child and great like yeah 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 baby yeah yeah but i want sex <laughs> that's the tease he was giving me anyway then we go over to eva eva is showing us her house and i thought she was scared to pretty much show us her house because of her crazy deranged uh, sperm donor don't as she calls them but it's her ex-boyfriend i think they were engaged at one time so she need to stop playing games with that but she's boasting that she's 35 years old she just bought a house and you know this that and the third okay moving on from there then we got todd he's out in somebody's neighborhood that he's trying to have set up like a movie set. But it's going to be for a baby shower. I don't know what the hell he got going on. It did not sound right and appropriate at all. I'm like, if that's the case, why are you just having it in your own neighborhood? No, because you know they weren't going to fool, fool around with that mess you were bringing there. Don Juan was there. Candy was okay that Don Juan was there so she could oversee stuff. Because she know how tall it is. Try to put a mess together and think it was uh, done appropriately. And it's just full of shit. So Don Juan was there. He was seconding. He was questioning um, some of Todd's uh, decisions he was making. Just to make sure he had got him on deck. So if it didn't go right, he would tell Todd, I follow your directions to the letter. And it's on you. It's not on me, baby. Even though I know it wasn't going to work. I wasn't going to argue with you. Because I don't work for you. I work for your wife. <laughs> That's the tea that Don Juan was giving me. Like, this is some fucked up shit he trying to do. But anyway, moving on. We got Cynthia. We with Cynthia. Now, she comes to see Kenya. Cynthia comes over to Kenya's house. Kenya tells her to come up to the third floor. She'll let her in remotely, I guess, from her phone. So, Cynthia follows suit, comes up to see her. Uh, the girl is in there. Kenya is in there packing up. Really, she ain't doing man switching clothes from one side to the next. Really, and I like I told y'all at the initial start of the video, that closet looked like it could be sent back to somebody's store. It had clothes that still had the tags on it. The shoes looked brand new. It just looked like a stage scene. 
And, you know, Kane was going around talk, telling, um, you know, trying to make like she was just so sad and discombobulated. And she just didn't know what to do with herself or her life. I was like, oh, girl. And I, like I said, I could sympathize with Kenya if I know this was a true marriage. But she didn't give me all up in my emotions and my feelings because I know it's not. So, um, she tells Cynthia that she's not allowed to or she was never allowed to call or contact Mark's parents, meaning his mother and his dad, and she just feel bad because she didn't have a good relationship with her mother, and she thought she could have a relationship with Mark's mother, and Brooklyn can have a grandmother that she can talk to sometime, you know, whatever. And, of course, Cynthia getting in all her feelings and all this, and third, she want to cut up Mark clothes like she's in a movie or something. And Kenya's like, no, 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 don't, don't do that. And I'm like, yeah, because you want to sell them back to the store or give them back their rented clothes that you borrowed just for the scenes on the show, okay? So, the only thing they're doing is collecting dust. That's pretty much it. Because them clothes are the brand new, okay? <coughs> it seemed like she tried to touch it up to look like, you know, um, what do you call it? <coughs> had to mess up some of the sleeves, you know, to take some of the creases out to make like they were worn. But the times that you saw more, child, please, we saw the outfit he wore at that black lab ex experience, and King had just bought that for him. Okay, and then the other times he's in, he's in t-shirts and stuff of that nature. So I'm like, where did all these clothes come from, girl? Where all these clothes come from? <laughs> Hey, Kenya, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Okay, you ought to be ashamed of yourself with this fraudulent, fake, foolery, fuckery storyline you have as you are a married woman. Girl, please, get out of here, honey. But anyway, moving on from there, um, Cynthia goes over to visit Eva. Eva, is uh, she lives three exits down from uh, Cynthia. And um, they're having a little small banter. She gives her a little tour of her home. Cynthia just uh, loves it, loves it, loves it. She goes on uh, to express that, um, you know, she loves the home and all that stuff. And then Eva goes on and say, well, wh what are you going to do? Are you going to stay in Atlanta? Because, you know, I just moved three exits down from you. And I'm like, Eva, that ain't got nothing to do with um, Cynthia, honey. Just because you wanted to move in the area because you were searching high and low for your place and... It just is what it is, girl. It just is what it is. But she hadn't invited nobody to her house but Cynthia. She said Cynthia would be the first of all the housewives she would have thought to want to bring to her abode. Okay. I'm like, oh, okay, girl. Okay. I would have thought it would have been Tara. Tara Banks since she put you on. <laughs> but, you know, it just is what it is. But anyway, she goes on to say, well, how are the other ladies doing? And, um... Cynthia volunteer information about uh, Kenya and what she's going through. And Eva just makes like, oh, it's, I, I feel so bad for her. I just said in third. I, I, you know, I'm like, Eva, shut up, okay? You don't feel no ways anyway about Kenya. You're just all about yourself and your life. And that's just it. Because you don't know Kenya like that, remember? Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, oh, and then Kenya was saying, I mean, Cynthia was telling uh, her about, Kenya asked her to come over to help her pack up some of Mark's stuff. Uh, and I'm like, if that was the case, Cynthia, you were trying to cut the clothes. She said, oh, no, 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 no. And then when you were trying to do something, she said, let's just get out of here and let's let the movers do everything. And I'm like, Kenya. See, I don't know what lies add up because, you know, Cynthia, she going around here saying, you asked her to come over to help you, but you showed and let her do nothing. I didn't see Cynthia do nothing but try to cut the man clothes, but you didn't let him do that. And you just wanted to throw a pity party. And we weren't here for that. Or hell, at least I wasn't here for it. So we move on from that scene because it was bogus. Anyway, we go to Candy. Okay. Can and Todd just sitting over there lounging around. Look like it's tension all over the place. Can Can you know, looking like she want to cry some more or whatnot. Todd looking like he got a chip on his shoulder and this, that, and the third. But they're both waiting on their counselor who's coming over. He's making house calls to their residence. He finally gets there. He's a British guy. And um, he goes on to introduce himself. Um, they do a little meet and greet. 
you know, I'm surprised Ken didn't ask him did he want something to drink or eat, but it just is what it is. She could ask the man, do you want a bottle of water or something, you know. That's just Southern hospitality. She skipped all over that. But anyway, um, I guess he pretty much starts with Candy because Candy seemed like she wanted to be a little bit more verbal at the time. Todd was being a little hush mouth over there like he was trying to figure out what he wanted to say and was it going to be a team up thing. Because she did have a, pl- a, a good playing field. It was two men. And it could have could have been a woman, but you know, it's, she didn't want Todd to feel like women were ganging up on him and this, that, and third. So pretty much, Candy took the lead way, and she tried to explain in her way, or from her perspective, of what was really going on between her and Todd and this, that, and the third, and her feelings on the matter. And then he finally listened to her in her entirety, and then he asked uh, Todd about his feelings. And he just bust out and said he feel more like Candy's uh, business partner than her husband. And I said, now we're on business terms now. You were just trying to tell her to decide where she wanted to be with you having a family or just she wants to just chase after her dreams and all her aspirations and hope that her family still be here waiting on her. I'm like, Todd, you too much. But he goes on to say, you know, Candy uh, is gone too much. Uh, she gets mixed up into uh, too much miscellaneous bullshit. Uh, she books uh, events when she's supposed to be at home with them. Before she even talks to him. I mean, she was just really saying Don Juan is really handling their life right now. And he don't run it past him or what, how he got Candy booked and this, that, and third. Because Don Juan feel like he don't work for Candy. He gonna do what he want to do. She either uh, do it or not. Candy can't. She has a mouth. She can't say no. But um, he was just putting that out on the table that she books things, uh, engagements that really aren't he feel business related and that it can wait because when she at home she need to be at home with them and uh he uh, trying to guilt trip uh candy and you know trying to pass it by the uh counselor but the counselor is smart enough to realize he's using his son to make candy feel bad uh a little bit more worse than what she already feel about the situation about her not being at home all the time but he threw that up in the ace be crying and coming in his room at four in the morning want his mama and all that kind of shit you know just trying to put it just put it on a little thick of the guilt trip then he feels that candy um prior or prioritize her friends and her business relationships that she needs to go out there and uh mix and mingle she puts those two especially her friends and their events over the family and him and he really stressed that you know in between time and in the meantime can over there crying you know like girl stop crying so much this is ridiculous that's what i want you to work on for next season can don't cry all the time just say what you got to say and keep it moving you know truth hurts but damn it just is what it is okay and then we finally got back to a candy to uh revoke re- i'm not to revoke debunk or uh debate the things that he was saying to find there there's any flaws or she can agree or she can disagree about what he's talking about uh she goes on and said she recognizes she has issues with finding balance come here Liza. come here come here uh, so she has issues with finding balance between work and family, you know, but Candy, you know, by nature, she's a go-getter. She wants money. She wants to have that attainment to have and to be afforded uh, the luxuries that she has definitely put herself in uh, and, and the lack of luxury and, and she don't want to, you know, leave it. So she knows what it takes to maintain what she has so she has to do what she got to do you know make appearances go here go there network with other people something Todd would be doing if he had the tenacity and drive you know like I said if his mama was still on, on earth she would put a fire on that joker she would put a fire up under that joker but right now he's being very placid or uh, 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 you know he's just being nonchalant about things and knowing she gonna take care of things but he wants to sit up there and complain you know and be a negative Fred how they say negative uh uh, uh downer Debbie 
uh, Betty, he been a down Fred, okay? Then Candy tells that Todd tries to control her when it comes to his eldest daughter. Like when she wants to do something uh, for her like her birthday was coming up. But her and Todd had got into an argument. So he wanted to take that privilege that Candy's supposed to have as a stepmom to flourish on her. She wanted to give her some money. We don't know how much money she was trying to throw her away. But they got her in a big argument about it. And I'm like, you know... That's why I say it's very hard to marry into a situation where a person already got kids. Because if you don't sit up there and say, okay, if they become my child due to marriage, then what am I do to mine? I'm going to do to yours. And, you know, in a good way is what I'm saying. Uh, because it just is what it is. And I have a means to do it. And I don't give a shit what you're talking about, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So, Todd and her had a, you know, a issue about it. So, it's just like, well, then you shouldn't have no issue on Riley. You should not speak on it at all, you know. But, you know, he had some problems with Candy overindulging uh, Riley with presents and stuff. So, it just never ends with Todd. If you ain't showering him, he don't want nobody else to get showered. And he probably has something to say about um candy you know loving on her mama and and showing and giving financial presents to them as well but it just is what it is okay then we got um candy telling the council that todd is busy too lord knows i don't know and i don't see what he be doing but if you want to give him that that he be busy he be going doing things and this that and the third trying to make business moves then yeah that that he sounds like a hypocrite but see, Todd wants your position, Candy. Uh, maybe not being an entertainer or anything like that, but he wants to make the film industry his. He wants to be gone. He wants to be having dinner parties, dinner lunch. I mean, lunch lunches with people. He he don't want to be in a position he's in now. That's pretty much what he wants. But he's in a better position than once he what he was in. He just wasn't making that kind of. He's making more money by how you got him set up. But if you would have left that joker right where he was, okay? Y'all would have dated a little bit longer. You probably would have found out more about him that y'all had more differences than y'all had similarities. And that y'all wasn't going to work, okay? But since you didn't, you threw caution to the wind. You end up marrying him. Now you're here faced with whether y'all going to stay together or whether y'all not. Because the issue is not going away. Either you're going to slow down uh pump your brakes be there for him maybe downsize sell your house and get into something a little smaller so he could feel like the man he needs to be and he could provide and you sit back like tiny over there and then ti run stuff okay but that's pretty much the choice you're gonna have to make uh before he makes it for you then can it go on and say that uh because a man asked him how they sex life was and can say hey, when it's good when they getting it in it's good but we ain't been getting it in later i said god darn it todd holding sex from you girl well i'm gonna tell you if he ain't giving it to you can he giving it to somebody else because he ain't that busy he ain't that cramped he ain't that losing sleep about where he gonna get his next dollar from to be able to take care of his family so he getting it in it's just not with you baby girl and then Todd saying well it's good when you have to wait for a long time till you give it to him I said girl you got a hot mess but you bought and paid for that man so you gotta um deal with what you got honey but that's all I had for the Real Housewives of Atlanta tonight guys um, it was kind of dry. Um, you know, y'all know how I feel about it. They need to do a replacement here and there. We need new blood. We need new scenes because I'm tired of seeing the same thing with Todd. Todd blaming Candy for just about everything. You know, being successful, not being there, but she's still bringing money home to keep him in the life and luxury he's been basking in since he met her and been married to her. But he wants to complain every damn chance he get. He's sickening, okay? Then we got Portia over there. You know she ain't going to change. She's going to love that man dirty draws. But you got... Um, Dennis saying prenup, prenup, prenup. That's all he can hear at this time. Then you got Cynthia over there. I don't know which way to go with her marriage or her future marriage. Whether she's gonna stay in Atlanta, whether she's gonna move to LA. Then you got um, who we got else? We got Eve over there playing house. Want to have babies for the rest of her life? Don't do too much nothing else, okay? Um, I think that's it. Portia, Cynthia. 
Oh, we got Nene trying to play like a wife when she knows she's getting bust out by somebody else. And she just stringing Greg along. She knows she ain't going to leave Greg, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see else. What else we got? Thank you for a uh, straight from the A. We use one of your little pictures with your name. So please don't come for me. <laughs> but thank you. And people that like Michelle Brown, the AT alien. She's another uh, fantastic blogger out there in the A doing her darn thing. Y'all should catch her. She has a YouTube channel as well. Check her out. She does the thing all day, every day. Okay. Um, but I think that's it, honey. Because they didn't really show nobody else on the scene um that i can think of other than cynthia trying to manage her sister and i told y'all family can't work together if those who can to have a good family unit out there and y'all can work together that's good but i come i know this of firsthand knowledge it's hard working with your family okay because you do have to go through the dramatization with that what they bring to you on some silly ass shit sometimes but for those who can work with their family, good. For those who can't, ooh, I know the feeling, baby. But that's all I have for this video. Y'all be blessed, and I will see y'all for something, I guess, next week. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be, but y'all enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the videos. Comment, uh, like them, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right, peace and blessings, guys. Good night.